Hello everyone and welcome to Critical Praxis week number five. Last week we talked about media and I was very excited about all of the great things that were said. This week the topic is set in collaboration with La Charles and me. The two of us kind of came up with this loose um, topic which reads, speak on the interplay between racism as an overt act and racism as a systemic practice that we are all engaged in. In what ways do you see racism produced in the forthcoming election in media and or in everyday life? What does it look like to intervene in these discourses? Now, I could have uh, taken this uh, topic in a number of directions, and I really kind of fought with myself about how I want to unpack this. And I really kind of want to uh, start it simple, and I really am looking forward to what the responses promise as we unpack this topic even further. Uh, racism as an overt uh, act is this individual idea our individualized idea that racism itself can only be marked through like the use of words that are hateful words, right? A racist word. And in fact, yes, that is in fact racist. But what ends up happening is this currently right now is the way that racism gets framed as the only form of racism, as if, 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 if the race card is played, so to speak, that someone's looking for that word, whatever that word be, maybe it's the N-word, maybe it's um, some other word, whatever the word is, we're looking for that one word to describe all of racism. And while these are certainly uh, racist discourses, racist words, racist actions, they don't speak to the larger system uh, directly. In fact, the way that we look at racism as, a, as an individual act, as this one word that we use, is it makes it the person's problem. Maybe it's someone that's too sensitive. And we say, well, why are you so sensitive? Uh, it was just a word. Well, it's more than just a word, at least in my communication uh, paradigm and what I truly do believe in is that language is never neutral. And that uh, because communication is constitutive of our realities, it's these words, these racist overt acts, these individual acts that are actually constituting, limiting, and disallowing for the person to fully thrive as is, as, as, as a fully participating uh, human. So racism as an individual act, uh, places all the blame on the person who is willing and able to say that was racist, right? As a systemic practice, we're looking at these individual acts as one component of the larger system of racism playing out in an ongoing cycle that pins certain bodies against others. Primarily, the lighter the color skin, the more privilege one has, and so on and so forth. As a systemic practice, it's more difficult for us to put our fingers on. On the individual uh, end of the spectrum here, we're able to say yes, I apparently have the power to say that. Yes, that was indeed a racist act. You did say this, that was racist. As a systemic practice, it's far more difficult. We're now getting into questions of hiring practices, of uh, enrollment practices in law schools, in schools themselves, um, even asking questions about what creates and constitutes one's sexual attraction to certain bodies over other bodies. Now we're getting into these larger discussions about racism as a production itself, as a larger ongoing system. Uh, the, the, the video that I linked to last week, she speaks directly to this. Uh, my video last Monday, and I'll actually link it again here, uh, it was me a while ago opening the dialogue about racism as it was produced in X-Men First Class. Just some general thoughts that came to mind after watching that film. Uh, as an example of this non-individual act, the way that racism itself uh, continues to perpetuate in new creative ways so that it can continue to persist. In many ways, racism itself thrives because we are so creative at making sure that we can find ways for it to thrive, and that's how it can be very damaging and, in fact, is very dangerous. Currently, the, 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 the phase that we're in is this neoliberal state, and in this neoliberal state, there's this very individual pursuit of happiness. Uh, there's a drive that propels us forward to fulfill our own destiny, whatever that might mean, and it disallows us from thinking of ourselves in community with others, and this is very... Um, I think emblematic of racism as how racism as a, an individual act versus racism as a systemic practice in forms within this system. That as an individual, if, if we're all engaged in this neoliberal uh, individual pursuit towards happiness or fulfilling the American dream, for instance, then that means a person who claims racism or plays the race card is hindering their own progress, right? That what ends up happening the way power operates within a neoliberal system and through a system of racism itself is it says, just keep moving towards the American dream. Don't complain about these things. Don't complain about these things. Stop trying to make the little waves, the little ripples happen because all you're doing is standing in your own way. In fact, you are your own enemy. And this type of rhetoric just allows a critical discussion about how racism is working against all of our bodies at the same time. 
the ways that I do, in fact, wield white privilege. And I believe that it's next week that our topic gets into critical uh, mixed race studies and what it means to be a mixed race person raised in a family that uh, one side is immigrant, one family is not. And what it means to wield white privilege uh, today in 2012 in this 31 year old body and for me to uh, just take my white privilege and never mark my, my mixed race background, my Asian side of my family, that if I do so what I'm doing is I'm standing in my own way. I'm not allowing myself to thrive as if that part of my body right, this mixed race component, the non-white part of my body is what stands in the way. And I think the mixed race body becomes a really interesting site to really help unpack how systemic racism operates on these very minute ways, but also in larger systems, right? That uh, my white skin allows me to move forward. For me to say I'm also Asian makes people say, why would you even bring that up? I'm not saying they do it overtly. This is part of the systemic practice. The systemic practice of saying, why even bring that stuff up? Just keep it to yourself if you want to succeed. So I'm really looking forward to what the others on the channel this week uh, bring up in terms of discussion about dialogue. Uh, we have some really, really, really smart people opening these dialogues and I'm really looking forward to them. Uh, for those of you out there watching, I invite you to please engage, subscribe, comment. Uh, if you have topics, please, by all means, ask us to engage these topics. Perhaps you yourself can also contribute video. I would look forward to that. Many thanks to you all and take care. Mwah.